So I found Dr. Sorla Kavana out here in the field doing her research. <laughs> Sorla, nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you, Dan. How are and you? Not too bad at all, Good. Sorla. So could you tell us, Sorla, who do you work for and what do you do? So I work in the National Biodiversity Data Centre in Waterford. Um, it's a wonderful place to work and my project is about protecting farmland pollinators. Okay, protecting farmland pollinators. And how did you end up doing this sort of work and how did you get an interest in this kind of work? Um, I suppose my interest stemmed from uh, my undergraduate degree in Trinity. Okay, I, and what I was that? Uh, botany. Botany? Yeah. Botany, cool. Uh, okay, sorry yeah. and carry on. So it's now plant science. Um, absolutely fascinating. Some of the best science you could ever study. Okay. <laughs> um, so I had an absolutely am like amazing lecturers, but one in particular, Professor Jane Stout, she taught me plant and animal interactions. So it was from studying uh, plant and animal interactions that I developed my passion for pollinators. Okay, so I suppose a plant and animal interaction is like any time when an insect goes up to a plant and just does something with exactly, it. Exactly, or not just an insect, any animal at all, whether it's a bird eating a berry from a, a tree. Okay, great. So when we think about pollinators, we often think about the honeybee, or that's what I think about. So when you think about pollinators, can you list, are there any other types of pollinators that we might know about? Yeah, we've got loads of pollinators in Ireland. Um, and I suppose the bees are probably the most popular. popular. Uh, and most people, when they think of bees, they only think of the honeybee. Mm -hmm. So the honeybee is just one of our pollinators. We have 99 different species of bees in Ireland. 99 different types of bees? So this is one of our 21 bumblebee species. And you can identify bumblebees based on their bum. Uh, this one's got a red tail. So um, the National Biodiversity Data Centre, where I work, have these swatches. And you can get these, they're not that expensive. And they, um, they're brilliant in helping you to identify what they are. So you can go to the, the red coloured and it'll go through it to see what it is. And you can identify what it is, it's brilliant. So this is the, the red tail or the, it's a very common bee that you'd probably see in your back garden easily. And it's very easy to identify because it's just completely black body and that's got that red tail. There's Bombus lapidarius. Brilliant, so we'll let her go now. Hopefully, she'll make her way out. Apart from the bees, what other type of pollinators would we have? Yeah, exactly. So we've got hoverflies as well. Uh -huh. Moths are pollinators too, uh, butterflies to a lesser extent, and wasps even pollinate. Okay, wasps? Yeah. I thought they were no good for anything. Uh, but so, so tell me about this field we're in. Is there anything special about this particular field or what could we find in this field? So this is um, probably one of my favourite fields uh, in the project that I'm working on at the moment. We're working on 40 different farms in the Kildare area uh, and this is just one farm. It's managed as a traditional hay meadow. So it's only cut maybe once, twice maximum a year. And it's got huge diversity of native Irish plants. Yeah, I see so many different colours of different flowers all around us. Yeah. And they're mainly native, are they? Exactly, yeah. So you've got the red clover, you've got the meadow buttercup, you've got some yarrow behind you. It's even got yellow rattle down in the back and Philip Pendula or Meadowsweet as you might know it. And so would you go around this field looking to find different types of pollinators? Yeah, pollinators and net? plants, exactly. Yeah, so I, I, I actually get paid to walk across this field and try and catch, identify pollinators and also identify all the different plants. Okay, so if any of the kids at home think that this sounds like a fun job, how do you end up doing a job like this? What should <laughs> um, they do? You get really lucky. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, what should they study? Uh, so plants, not physics. So, not physics, oh, I'm afraid. Okay. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> um, I suppose so. I studied uh, botany in Trinity, so that's plant science. You could also study um, entomology, which would be the science of insects. You could do environmental science would be another course that you could do in university. But you don't have to uh, have a university degree okay. to study science. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. go straight out of. Um, uh, school and some of the best plant identification people I know okay. in Ireland don't have a degree from university. Great, well that's great to know. So you can just kind of develop a, a, a love of it yourself and you can just go exactly. and, and find other people who are passionate about it. And I think there's a lot of people who are passionate about pollinators and wildflowers in Ireland. Yeah. Okay, Sorla, maybe we can go to another part of the farm and you can show us something that's going on over there. Brilliant. Okay, Sorla's after bringing us to a location that to me doesn't look like a sort of place where pollinators might live, but she tells me pollinators actually live here. Tell us yeah. more, Sorla. So over 60% of our bee species in Ireland are mining bees. So they mine holes into bare banks like this one. Like um, this hole? 
not the big one. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, these little ones here. Okay. okay. Yeah, those small ones. Exactly. Okay, great. So over 60%. So that's uh, of our 99 species. I'm going to let you guys work that one out. How many are mining bees? So these are our solitary bees, which means they live alone. Although you can see here that there's lots of different holes together. So we call this an aggregation. So there's an aggregation of yeah, a solitary bee species. There, so. Sometimes they could put little ones in here. This may be a badger set or something like that. I'm not sure. Cool. Great. Lovely stuff. Well, that's an unusual place for us to find bees. I'm going to watch out for these mining bees. But can you take us to another location? Definitely, yeah. Okay, let's go. This, Sorla tells me, is a really good example of a hedgerow that's really good for pollinators. Why is that, Sorla? Well, you can't see them now, but in the month of May, this hedge was filled in beautiful white blossoms. So it's a hawthorn hedge, a great flower for pollinators. The more flowers you have in your hedge, the more pollinators you're going to have. Okay, and this is a really tall hedge. Are they usually this tall? Well, it all depends on how frequently you cut it. So the management techniques used on this hedge is that it's cut every four to five years. And unfortunately, a lot of our hedges in Ireland are now being cut every year. This doesn't allow any flowers to come out, so there's no food for pollinators. Okay, all right, so try and let them grow taller if you can. And you said to me as well that it's not just up in the hedge that you find stuff for pollinators. You said you can find stuff along the ground as well? Yeah, the ground flora. So that's what we'd call all the flowers that are growing along the ground at the base of a hedge. So there's huge diversity of flowers at the base of this hedge. So diversity means there's lots of different types of plants. Okay, lovely Lots stuff. of different species. Great. Well, that's fantastic. We're seeing so much. Let's try one more location before we go. Okay. Right. So Sorla tells me that this is a nesting site for a different type of pollinator. What's this? So this is another uh, nesting site for bees, but they're cavity nesting bees. So we have 15 species of cavity nesting bees in Ireland. And you can easily create these with any piece of wood. You want to drill 10 centimeters deep using um, drill bits between four and eight millimeters. Okay. That's important and don't have any splinters. Okay. They don't like them. Um, but what you can do is you can mount it on a south facing wall or facing the morning sun. They like to see the sunrise. Um, and a solitary bee will come and lay its egg inside. And you can see that some of these uh -huh. have been occupied. And oh. this is when the holes are covered over. And depending on what material is used to cover the hole, you'll have a different species. So there's bees in there right now? There are uh, bees eggs in there right now. Oh, bees So we'll eggs. have to come back in spring to see them emerge. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Thanks so much, Sorla. No worries. Let's go this way. Okay. Thanks so much for that, Sorla. I learned so much about pollinators and about wildflowers and about where they can all live. And uh, the last question I have for you is, are you hopeful for the future of pollinators in Ireland or are they in danger? Well, one third of our bees are threatened with extinction. Okay. It's quite significant. Yeah. Um, and we don't even know about our hoverflies. Okay. But in Ireland, we have launched the All Ireland Pollinator Plan. Uh -huh. It was launched in 2015. And I suppose it's grasped the nation. Everybody seems to be getting involved and everybody is taking action to protect pollinators. Great. In terms of food, shelter and safety and providing all of those for our pollinators. Wonderful. So whether it's you doing it in your garden uh -huh. or the farmer doing it on his land or else you taking part in getting your school to join the pollinator plan, you can record those actions. You can monitor pollinators. Great. And together, I'm quite hopeful that we are going to help pollinators. Lovely. Well, that's fantastic. So it's nice to end on that little hopeful note. And I hope that you guys have learned a lot yourselves as well. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. And we're looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.